Uh, I see Angus and Clement and Mary and me, and of course, Holly. All right, good. Uh, okay. Holly, are you ready? You're, my, you're muted. Ready to go, Mr. Chair. Okay. All right. Thank you. Here we go. Uh, as a preliminary matter, this is Rob Benchley. Uh, permit me to confirm all members and persons that participate on the agenda are present can hear me. When I call her name, please respond. And I'll start. Uh, Mary Lathrop Will. Hello. Thank you. Angus McLeod. Here. Thank you. Clement Durkis. Here. Durkis, sorry. Uh, Rob Benchley is here. Anything is All right, good. Uh, good morning. This open meeting of the Wisconsin Advisory Board is being conducted remotely consistent with Governor Baker's executive order March 12, 2020, due to the current state of emergency in the Commonwealth due to the outbreak of the COVID-19 virus. In order to mitigate the transmission of the virus, we've been advised and directed by the Commonwealth to suspend gatherings, and as such, the order suspends the requirement of open meeting law to have all meetings in publicly accessible physical location. Further, all members of public bodies are allowed to encourage to participate remotely. The order, which you can find posted with the agenda materials of this meeting, allows public bodies to meet entirely remotely so long as reasonable public access is afforded so the public can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. Uh, ensuring public access does not ensure public participation unless such participation is required by law. This meeting will feature public comment. For this meeting, the uh, Wisconsin Advisory Board is convening by video conference via Zoom app posted on the town's website identifying how the public may join. Please note that this meeting is being recorded and that all attendees are participating by video conference. Accordingly, please be aware that other folks may be able to see you. Take care not to screen share your computer. Anything you broadcast may be captured for, by the recording. All supporting materials that have been provided members of this body are available on town's website unless otherwise noted. The public is encouraged to follow along using the posted agenda unless I note otherwise. Now we're turning to the first item on the agenda. Before we do so, permit me to cover some ground rules for effective and clear conduct of our business and to ensure accurate meeting minutes. I'll introduce each speaker on the agenda. If after they conclude the remarks, the chair will go down the line of members inviting each name to provide comment, question, or motions. Please remember to mute your phone or computer when you're not speaking. Please remember to speak clearly. And for any response, please wait until the chair yields the floor to you and state your name before speaking. If members wish to engage in conversation with other members, please do so through the chair. After members have spoken, the chair will afford public comment to those members of the public that have joined the meeting via Zoom. Members of the public who wish to speak must state their names and be acknowledged by and speak through the chair. And each vote taken in this meeting will be conducted by roll call vote. Okay, having said that, I think I need to uh, make a uh, I'll take a motion for the adoption of the agenda as, pre as presented. So moved. Thank you. All those in favor? Uh, Mary Lathrop? I second. I mean, yes. Okay, thank you. Clement Turkeys? Yes. Angus? Aye. And Rob is an aye. It's unanimous. And I don't see anybody public comment, but uh, we're going to go straight to 4 Shell Street. Uh, Lynn Here, Bolton. We actually have minutes. Oh, we do? We actually have minutes. Oh, oh, that's right. I believe Kadeem emailed them. He did. Yeah, he, he, also, he did. He also emailed a letter uh, from the people who live in Daisy Cot, which is in a butter. Uh, they're at 2 New Street. Um, we've had, have we had feedback from Deb Ferrance Gray, who is at 0 New Street, also in a butter. I am not aware of anything. Okay. I haven't heard anything either. Um, okay, let me back up a little bit. Let me uh, 
I'll, I'll take a entertain a motion to uh, accept the minutes from the December seventh meeting. Uh, I'll. Uh, do you want me to make that motion? Yes, please. It's, okay, Mary makes the motion that we accept the minutes from the December seventh meeting. Thank you. All those in favor? Uh, Angus McLeod. Uh, I'm going to have to pass because I haven't read the minutes. I'm sorry. I, I missed that in the email. Okay. Thank you. Uh, and Clement. I actually looked for the minutes before I got online for the meeting and didn't find them. So I really can't vote either. Can, oh. can we, um, can we just, uh, we, we can to, post. Can we move to vote on that the next meeting, and um, maybe Kadeem could resend the minutes. Uh, I th I think that's I will. A I'll find them, Mr. Chair, and, and resend them again. I know Kadeem, okay. can, but I can resend them. Okay. Well, then the uh, chair notes through various information that uh, we will take up the matter of the December seventh meeting minutes at our next meeting which would be probably February 6th, 7th. All right, thank you. All right, well now on to uh, Orshell Street. Uh, I don't see anybody here to represent. Um, Mr. I was Chip able to, okay. yes, please. This is Mary, and just for clarification, if you look in the view pack, the minutes are, I believe, the first thing. Uh, it actually says November 24th. Uh, the minutes are uh, included in the view pack. It's the first item in the view pack that Kadim sent, along with the application by Lynn Bolton the plot plan or the, the location plan and the stuff about the permit and then the looking at the, um, uh, yeah, the plot plan is also there and the plan for the construction of the garage. And then this is uh, the new plan where they've changed the roof line. It's still a tall skinny structure but it doesn't have the gambrel roof did everybody see all? Yeah, there we go. That's what we're looking at. I think that's the, um, I think that the first item in this, in this actual sending was the minutes that we're discussing. Those okay, fine. Well, then I, well, we still need some time to look them over. So we'll, yep. we'll, um, so, yep. so we do, so we do have them that thank you for pointing that out and we'll discuss them next time if that's okay with everybody. Okay. Uh, I was able to, this is Rob, I was able to uh, get the previous submission of this application. And I noticed uh, right away that it is much, it's a much different shape than it was, but it didn't change the height of the building on the new drawings. It still reads 22 feet, nine inches. Yeah. And I've got them side by side on my other computer. And of course the other one's much taller. And I, hard for me to take a measured drawing off a iPad screen, but um, uh, if we had the applicant here, they could tell us what that dimension is. And that's, I mean, obviously it looks much lower. This uh, is where but, it's important to be showing the previous plan alongside the new proposal. Yes. And also none of the elevations are, are marked wh where they are, north, south, east, west. Um, the, garage are, um, the garage east. door the garage would be uh, east. east facing. I think we can figure it out, but that's not helpful. Correct. And that's also and also the relationship to this with the rest of the neighborhood, which is the basis of one of the letters. Yeah. 
I walk, this is Clement. I walked by there this morning and I will just say, this is a very dense little corner back in, in the, you know, where you've got Daisy Cot and um, those two other little buildings. Um, it's just really tight in there. Uh, and water, whale spout has their outside second story patio that would um, be heavily impacted by the this double roof. Um, I think it's, to me, it's just a really tight, 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 tight space. And you kind of need as much um, sky as you can get in there. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Chair? See. Yeah. Mary, it's Mary. Um, I, I remain against allowing this building because I think it's just over, <laughs> over building and, and again, it's too large a mass and I, I, it's exactly all of the things that um, the HDC mentioned in their first look at the building. However, I will note that at least they've taken the windows away from the zero new street side. So it's li a little less invasive uh, from a visual point of view, as in they can't look in the bedroom windows any longer, but it's still a problem. It's, it's absolutely, there's no setback. It's on the lot line. This second story building or this two story building, it's on the lot line. And that's just, that's too much. They've already overbuilt that property. <clears throat> Yeah, hi, this is Rob. Uh, maybe they could just keep it to one floor. And... That was actually the suggestion in the, um, at, in the HDC meeting. The suggestion was that if they want to expand the capacity of the building, they go down. They just create a basement um, and uh, put, the, put the second story in the ground story. Hi, this is Angus. I... I believe that in their plan, they've already shown going down. So they're, they're really wanting to triple the floor uh, space by going up and down. But I agree with you, Mary. I think going down would be much more appropriate um, than, than going up. Um, the, the expansion that is being proposed here uh, it makes the building uncharacteristic of everything that's around it. Uh, the shapes, the fenestration, the details, the, the um, slight uh, flush dormer, uh, the eight foot tall shower, the unsupported uh, awning over the side door. Uh, and that's not even looking at the, the legal issues as far as code, where the stair comes up to a knee wall that's less than four feet high. Um, so I think there are a lot of things that need to get rethought in this. So I, I would recommend that they, um, they come back with a different proposal. Thank you, Angus. Uh, Clement's spoken. I'll say, uh, this is Rob. I agree with every, everybody said. Um, it seems like a real uh, a compacting of elements that you'd see in a larger building. And, it, and then it would just kind of obliterate the nice lines of the existing one. So if they were proposing to go down, I would, I would, I would stick with that. I mean, that, that just keeps the integrity of the, of the garage as a garage, you know, the roof line, the height, uh, it just seems if, if that's something that they were proposing, I, I would hope that they would not tinker with this, with a second story. And especially with what some of the neighbors have, are reacting. And also the view from the street. Thank you.
Oh, that. Uh, so that outdoor shower is on is on the street, isn't it? On the street side. I think it's actually on the south side of the building, facing their garden. But I mean, it's on the southeast corner. Oh wait. It's in oh, the I middle. It yeah, middle of the building. Middle. Okay. It just looks from the drawing as if it's on the street side. Because okay, yep. And Mr. Chair, I just wanted to note for the record, the letter from the abutter um, is from Two New Street um, <coughs> Whites, just for the record. Okay. And you yes, all have that, true. and that has been sent to HTC for their consideration as well. Good. Yeah, that's the one that I referenced earlier. I also noticed in the, this is Clement, in the HDC comments, it did say that there was a, a letter from Deborah Fayance Gray Fair that was right. presented at the, at, the, um, at the prior look at this. So there, so there are two letters from Abutters. Correct. This is Rob, if I may, I'm gonna just read this paragraph. This is from the uh, Betsy Hussey White and Daniel White at the number two, New Street. Uh, if implemented, the proposed addition would be a major detriment to the historic character of Wisconsin Pump Square area and represent an urbanification of what has been a zealously safeguarded historic district. That seems to be the gist. Absolutely right. All right, are there uh, any further comments? And uh, if not, I'll, I am I'll noting, Mr. Chair, that Thank you. This, this, this doesn't seem to address the location of where it's where it is. Um, I'm Holly, sorry, Holly, I didn't, it, uh, can you please repeat that. Oh, this site plan seems to be, I'm assuming this is the structure right here. Correct. And that's the house. It's just, it's, it's not, I know that there was a comment from um, Commissioner Oliver about the location within the neighborhood. So we referenced. Yeah, this is right. We don't have yes. a site plan showing the proximity. Yeah. Yep, that's correct. It 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 does not the the plan does not show the proximity to the adjacent buildings. The uh, the GIS one does, but it's not. Um, you know, that's not terribly accurate. Well, it it, and, it would appear uh, as one walks by it to be inches from the lot line. Yes, and, and, and that's shown on the plan too, that it's definitely inches from the lot line. Do we know when that garage was built? Probably back when Henry Wazerski lived there. I don't have the exact date. Um, it's been renovated, but. <clears throat> um, this is Clement. I have a little cottage on my house and we were su proposing some changes to it. And as I recall, I mean, it does not have any setbacks similar to this. We were not allowed to do any changes unless we um, um, moved it to accommodate setbacks. So I don't know if that would apply here, but. You might be in a different zoning. Category. Yeah, you're, yes, but I, I would believe that this is old historic Wisconsin. It should be even stricter zoning than mine, but it is right on the lot line. I would yeah. imagine that it would have to go to the zoning board of appeals because it is within the setback. It is expanding it, but it's not making it any worse. In other words, it's, one foot plus or minus from the line 
um, which is in the setback, but they're not going to be extending any any further to make that worse. Yeah. Um, yeah. But they would have to go to ZBA in order to um, go up and down. And honestly, logistically, to, to put in a foundation for a, a full basement um, is like, I mean, they would have to have the neighbor's consent to put a retaining uh, wall in there to hold back their property while they install this basically on the line. Um, so I think that it's just a, it's kind of an impossible situation. Yep. This is Clement. Thank you, Angus. I always like to think about the impact of the construction on the existing <clears throat> property. So well said. Okay, thank you, Clement. Thank you, Angus. Thank you, Mary. Uh, Holly, I know you're, you either take shorthand or you write in quick, incredibly quickly. Uh, did you get all that? <laughs> yes, sir, I did. Uh, first of all, they don't have the previous plans um, included in here. I also want to note too that um, it's up to the applicant with this lovely format that we have to provide the previous submittal along with. So of course those photographs that you all saw previously are not included in the PDF here and that's up to the applicant, not staff. We, we, can't, we can't take that burden on. Um, and, it's, and it's noted multiple locations for that. Um, for, for them to consider keeping this to just the one floor as it is right now, um, keep, to keep the integrity of the existing garage, it's really tight. Um, over against it, it's overbuilt, it's too large for the area. Um, note, noting that the Elise uh, windows are not uh, obtrusive to the uh, abutter, but it's still very obviously close to the lot line. And also the, the changes to the proposal are uncharacteristic of the neighborhood um, concerning. So I think I got it. Let me know if there's anything else I can add. Anybody? I will also notate to the commission, um, the obviously the fact that we do have another butters letter, as well as um, the plan does not show the proximity to the other buildings as requested by the commission. The architectural elements that are inconsistent with the immediate neighborhood um, is the massing, the fenestration and the roof lines. Well put. Okay, well, I think, um, I think we can. Are we going to buy 36 main? Do we have yeah. anything? To do? Caroline, Caroline wanted to talk about that. She was doing the research on it. She and I have spoken just to get some neighbor feedback that I had gotten for her. But I think she's, if she's not with us, then we probably could bypass that. I'll make a motion to approve the comments. I mean, the, um, yeah, the comments. I'll second that. Thank you. Thank you, Angus, for that. Uh, all in favor of Angus's motion to accept our comments. Uh, Clement, thank you. Uh, Mary Lathrop? Yes. Thank you. Angus is a yes. Rob, Rob is a yes. Motion made and seconded and approved unanimously. And uh, if there's no further discussion, I'll take a motion to adjourn. So moved. Thank you very much. All those in favor? Aye. Um, thank you, Angus. Uh, Mary? Aye. Uh, Clement, who made the motion? Aye. Thank you. Rob is an aye. The ayes have it. Okay, everybody. Uh, I'm going to... Uh, the uh, 10 Beach Street application, I think, is coming up today at 4.30. I'll, I'm going to sit in on that. I've been waiting for it to come up.